You know, I mean, it's kind of interesting, isn't it, that the whole uh, Fifth Lauren story kind of, you know, dropped off a cliff. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that particularly because Robin flies in today, and I've known Fifth Lauren many years, you know. People don't realize what a big deal he was in Counter-Strike Source, how he was a star player, then he goes into CSGO, and he's in the most successful team in NIP. They have that legendary streak, which will never be beaten. There will never be another 87 and 0 team. Uh, then he is kind of deemed to be the fifth wheel. Uh, everyone is wrecking him. You've got journalists basically using their entire platform just to criticize him. Uh, you know, writing articles about one thing and then just writing a paragraph about how much Fifth Lauren sucks. Yeah, Lerpus, I mean, we all know who I'm talking about. Um, and then, you know, he finally leaves and everyone's like, God, I'm gonna bloody miss that Fifth Lauren. All the fans who are baying for his blood. And now he works at Twitch. He's like still involved in esports and nobody like talks about it. Like he's had one of the most interesting careers I, I when I first moved to Turner, we storyboarded some documentaries. I don't know if I should say or whatever. It's the truth, um, but we I storyboarded some documentaries, and one of the ones I did was like working title was the Fifth Wheel, and it was talking about Fifth Lauren's career because I thought it was just super interesting. So definitely that. There was another interesting one with Manja Capra. This is going back a little bit more. Uh, Manja Capra, uh, the legendary 1.6 player from the UK. He was when CGS came up he was offered a general manager's spot he was offered to be a manager at Birmingham Salvo and that would have been brilliant you know that's job security is certainly a lot more secure I mean no one was secure in CGS it turned out but you, you, you know you were certainly more secure as a manager than you were as a player you can just get cut from a team if you were a general manager and part of the machinery obviously you you got a job for as long long as long as you know but Manja Capra turned down that job because he wanted to win a world championship because he's never done it before. Um, and they brought Odie in as a result of that. Odie, the Dignitas uh, founder. So he ended up being the Birmingham Salvo manager. He picked up the 1.6 team with Manja Capra in it. And they won a, they won a championship in the, in the first year. So Manja Capra got to achieve it. So. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool story overall. And I always respected him for that. I don't know what he's doing now, Manja Capra. I think he went on to be a poker player. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I don't think he liked me particularly, which is fine, but I, I got a lot of respect for him. Uh, and, you know, there's some cool ones now. I, I wish people would focus on, like, some of the sacrifices that I know some players have made. Again, I don't want to name names, but um, I certainly think, uh, you know, there's players out there that uh, are estranged from their parents because of the choices they've made, and they've gone pro, and it's like this weird, awkward negotiation. I don't know how I'd feel if parents had said we will not talk to if you pursue your dreams. You not only pursue your dreams, you're successful doing so, and then your parents are like, okay, you're making more money than me now. Let's be friends again, let's play happy families. There's a couple of players in that situation. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a ton of great stories out there. People don't really dig, they want easy narratives. They want stuff that's like little snippets. Uh, the average fan uh, treats esports like a pantomime. You're either a villain, or a good guy, and you can be that many times over, and it'll last for weeks at a time. You know, I know that. One minute, well, he's bullying somebody, he's, he's evil, he's despicable. Put a story out exposing, you know, something bad. Where would we be without Richard Lewis? Three weeks later, God, I hate Richard Lewis. You know, same person, it's not different people. That's what's crazy about it. So, yeah, so I think there's good stories out there, and, and people need to start telling the overarching stories because we've been around a while now, you know? Um, I mean, again, it's different generationally. Uh, you know, right now, I think Fallen's, a, you know, certainly iconic, right? You know, not, not just for what he does in-game, having, you know, but, but for everything he's done for the Brazilian scene. Now, you, you know, no icon is without their flaws. Uh, but certainly, there, there wasn't really a Brazilian scene before he took it by the scruff of the neck and made a team, and then eventually he brought through new talent like Cold Zero, you know, this amazing player, pound for pound, one of the best players of uh, all time in CSGO. Um, so, but... It's, but it all goes through Fallen, right? So there isn't really a Brazilian scene. There's not an amazing SK gaming team. There's not these amazing games like at Columbus, you know, the uh, Luminosity Team Liquid match. Um, all of that really propels from him. So he's definitely iconic. Uh, you know, I, I think um, from a European perspective, because our teams tend to be a bit more competitive, uh, it, it's kind of cyclical. But you know, that Fnatic 2015 lineup is absolutely insane. Everybody from there, you know, Olofmeister, Old School JW, obviously, 
people have their issues with Flusher, but he, he's worthy of being mentioned in that same breath, depending on what you believe. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's a ton of names. I think that's what's great about it. You know, you have these players that emerge and they're like the best in the world or one of them for maybe 12 months. Anything beyond that is crazy, you know? Uh, and, and when you get when you do get those players that kind of cycle in the new ones it gives you like a, that's what continually gives the game a shot in the arm so you know and I would personally say Guardian because I've known him many years and I think he was quite possibly a contender for the best source player of all time alongside our PK so uh, you know like I said I, I, I take a sense of pride in, in what we're doing and uh, the stories we get to tell uh, so yeah, you know, I, the best bit about it for me is just that we got to put Counter-Strike, which is a game about two groups of people running around shooting each other in the head and trying to plant bombs. We put that on American television and uh, we made it super entertaining. We've told the stories about the people who did it. Everyone's bought in. We didn't compromise anything to do with it. Now, that was the best thing about doing it the E-League way and the Turner way. We didn't compromise anything at all. Uh, it wasn't like CGS where it's like, we got to make it shorter, we got to have more money, blah, blah, blah. We, we, made, we put Counter-Strike as it should be on TV and we made people like it and tune in. So yeah, that, I'm very proud of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh, you know, I, 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 what I miss uh, is I do miss the idea of being involved with like the running of a team. Um, I miss that feeling because I used to be a manager and a coach. You know, I've done that in the past, um, and I and I miss that. You know, you've got a broadcast team, but it's not quite the same thing because uh, a broadcast isn't necessarily a grueling ordeal. It certainly shouldn't be, right? It's not like at the end of every broadcast at Ealing we all get together and roll. Oh God, I can't believe we made it, you know. But um, yeah, but but you know, I, I miss that feeling, you know, of achievement and pushing and driving. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I I think I could see myself going back to that one day. Um, I don't know when, but um, I feel like I've got an unfinished business there. You know, when I was a manager, I never won a major tournament or you know a, a major class of, of tournament. Um, you know, had some near misses, but you know, uh, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to be behind some players again. Yeah, reliving my Jason Lake fantasy I had when I was like, uh, you know, first getting involved in Wii Sports. So, so very briefly, um, I wanted to write a book about kind of homelessness in the UK, and uh, I spent a lot of time just volunteering. There's a lot of local shelters, and um, you can, uh, you know, and, and just in general, you know, like go out of a night and. You know where they congregate and, and, and where the social programs are to give them, you know, soup, you know, soup kitchens, I think you call them in America. Um, so I used to go out and you sort of distribute like clothing or, you know, whatever it was, money, um, food. So I used, I used to do that. Um, I wouldn't call myself a great Samaritan or anything by, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I didn't do it for a particularly prolonged period of time. I did it as long as I was able and then I kind of tunneled in on work again. But, um, you know, I, I, th I think homelessness is like one of the really like shocking things about Western society. I think it's incredible that it sort of happens. And uh, having talked to a lot of people, the stories are always heartbreaking. I, I, I went through a phase where I used to believe it was you know, bad life choices that put somebody on the streets. That was the only explanation for it. But it isn't. You can literally slip through the cracks of society and uh, you not, not necessarily done anything wrong yourself. It can be something as simple as you can't hold down a job for whatever reason and then you can't pay your rent and then you don't have a support network around you and before you know it, that's that. And a lot of veterans on the streets, a lot of people that have got mental illness. These people are, you know, um, ill. They, they, don't, they shouldn't be out on the streets. It's, and, I, and I think what really tapped me onto it was in Birmingham there was a double murder a guy stabbed to, um, we have this magazine called The Big Issue. It's what you sell to make a bit of money. It's like uh, a way to enterprise the homeless, um, which I don't particularly approve of, but but it's a, it is a social program. And uh, yeah, th there was a double murder, like two guys just got stabbed. And you're like, wow, you know, that's what they're living with every day. So yeah, so that was a big eye opener. So I try and do, try and do as much as I can, but probably it's not enough like a lot of people.
For more CSGO interviews and analysis, subscribe to our channel. You can also find stats, discussions, and more on our website and mobile app at blitzesports.com.